Joining us now, Afsana Beshlas, CEO at Rock Creek, a global investment firm with more than $16 million in assets. Afsana, it is so wonderful to see you and get your perspective. What do you think, fear or greed? Great to see you, Alex. I think we are moving closer to neutral. I think uh, all along in the first part of the year, no matter what numbers were coming out, and as interest rates were going up so fast, the equity markets were holding up, and everyone was wondering at what point would they slow down, where we have seen uh, the last few weeks that eventually interest rates have caught up. And, um, and I think where we are now is closer, I would say, to a neutral. I wouldn't say, you know, sort of a big emphasis on fear or greed at this moment. But what is really interesting, Alex, is the emphasis for investors has suddenly moved from equity markets to bond markets. Everyone is getting a new tutorial on bond markets. <laughs> Um, how many more lessons, um, Afsana, do you think they still have to learn? Um, it's Guy, by the way. Nice to see you too. Um, do you think, I, what, else, what else do we need to learn in this, in this narrative? How high do you think yields can go? What do you think is driving this yield move? Great to see you, Guy. Also, I think what is going on, obviously, is huge amounts of debt that has been issued by governments, by corporations, by everybody uh, is there. And we also know that a lot more debt will have to continue to come out into the markets. We also know some um, non-U.S. investors in our bond markets have slowed down their purchase of our bonds. Mm. At the same time, uh, we are... You know, the news, the political news, uh, whether it is Speaker McCarthy's news last night or other news coming up potentially with government uh, shutdown next month, are not really helping markets. So they are creating what I would call more of uncertainty for mm -hmm. investors. And that is certainly pushing people, one, into more bonds, and two, to the longer end of the duration of bonds. Uh, ironically, right? Uh, Afsana, so what is the best strategy i mean do you just buy the long end sit and hang tight and sell equities like what, 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 what how do you deal with all this i think lesson one for investors always has been to be diversified because again there are so many things that could happen between now and then we could get uh inflation numbers getting uh, getting much more moderate and this long-term impact that we've been expecting happening sooner in the next over the next few months if the Fed does not increase rates which it probably won't in November and po possibly not in December a lot of what we uh, fed into the market was the change in the expectation that Fed would only have maybe one or or two or three um, uh, it redu uh, reductions in rates next year versus yep. four or five, which had been the original expectation. Those expectations can change very fast. And then, you know, you want to be diversified. Asana, a lot of people have diversified into real assets. They've diversified into utilities and people have looked to the climate change story and tried to figure out whether or not they're going to get a real yield, a decent yield, sorry, uh, off that story. How do you invest in things like utilities and climate transformation technology at a time when you're being offered 5% in a money market account, triple C's are offering you circa 14%, you're getting some really good yields, you could argue, in, in, in some places like that. Why would I want to put money into climate change? Uh, so the reason you want to put money into climate change is really the what we're seeing every day in our day lives, right? Whether it's a flood or a fire or all the things that are going on are pushing people to look at alternatives for their energy sources. Obviously slower than what we expected. However, the big push of the infrastructure um, uh, money that is coming in from the government as well as the IRA mm -hmm. is actually starting to be felt and probably much more money will be pushed into the markets next year. So the momentum will be there. You also are seeing people's habits changing, whether it is buying EV cars, whether it is for the big utilities, as you said, who are investing in um, new parts of their software, let's say, right. to be able to um, take on solar energy versus just coal and oil. But everyone's cost of capital is going up pretty hard. Um, yes. What does break, though? 
By the way, cost of capital going up affects oil and gas also. Oil and gas mm-hmm. industry have to make huge capital investments in order to maintain existing production plus new production coming on stream. So it's not a question of one needing investment and you know only you only look at sort of investments needed on the renewable side. We certainly uh, would need investments also on the on the traditional side. And I think the question is on the renewable energy side, there might be a lot more opportunities of small smaller cap- capital investments allowing people to diversify their sources of energy much faster than the huge amounts you need for the very large oil and gas projects. Hmm. Afsan, it's been great to catch up and this is an area which you're hugely interested. Afsana Beshloss, the CEO at Rock Creek.